We see an introduction to Brigitte, aka Shane. Why was I gonna call him Shane? Why was I gonna call him Shane? This is not Smosh. Oh man. I just don't give him my camera. I'm picking it up. Sorry about that. Hi my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I wanted to discuss something once again from a subsection of YouTube I grew up with called LPS Tube. This was a community on YouTube full of people who collected the toy by Hasbro called Littlest Pet Shop. And people would make all sorts of content from skits and comedy to even full-fledged teen drama series. And that's what we're gonna be discussing today, a teen drama series called LPS Popular. LPS Popular was a web series started by fellow LPS tuber Sophie GTV, or formerly known as Sophie Garrett on the platform. The teen drama LPS Popular basically revolves around the rivalry and schemes of our two main characters, Savannah Reed and Brooklyn Hayes, and their respective cliques and love interests. Gaining over 400,000 subscribers, Sophie Garrett started making her own videos in 2008 as an entertainment source for her little brother. So she really made videos without expecting to gain any sort of audience, but when others eventually found her channel, she decided to continue and only further her storytelling for her newfound audience. Now, Sophie may be known for LPS Popular, but trust me, she's made other classics such as Harry Otter and... <laughs> But when you think of LPS Tube, a lot of people actually associate LPS Popular with it. Like, that's the first thing that comes to mind. I think it's partly because for the people who didn't grow up as a part of this community, whether you were making videos in the community or just consuming the content, you were still there. But as I was saying, for the people who were not there, LPS Popular, I think, is just simply the only way a lot of people have become aware of um, LPS Tube as a whole. Only the real ones know, guys, okay? Euphoria would be nothing without LPS Popular. Hi, so I don't get comments about this, I just wanted to say I know you can see my hair underneath the wig for the first, like, basically while I talk about season one, the first 40 minutes of this video. Honestly, it just wasn't worth refilming for me, especially when it's kind of canon that she would be balding anyway. I was gonna say LPS Popular walked so Euphoria could run, but I just can't disrespect such a masterpiece like that. But anyway, this show garnered quite the fan base. I mean, things went as far as making some of the pets like used in the show, um, rare among collectors simply because, I mean, who wouldn't want to own their favorite character from LPS Popular? I myself have only been able to obtain um, Sage, Angelina, before her, you know, makeover sequence, and Brigitte. And yes, he's trapped um, for the remainder. Oh yeah, it's very fitting. Not gonna lie, Savannah is still one of my like dream pets to this day. Like LPS wiener dogs have always been some of my like favorite dog molds. Like, I don't mean like the other Dotson mold, I literally mean like this specific one. Because, you know, did you guys ever have that like one LPS you named after yourself and considered to be you in the LPS universe? Like your LPS Sona, if you will. Well, mine was actually LPS um, 4191, aka the same um, wiener dog mold. But to get back on track though, basically I decided spontaneously, let's binge the entirety of LPS Popular in less than three days. And today I will be recapping the entire thing so that you don't have to rewatch it again. But actually I do suggest you. I actually rate the experience a solid five animated Tom Dawson heads out of five. Now let's call the first section of this video Sophie Garrett episodes. Or I mean it might not be a section, but the, epi the first three episodes I'm gonna be talking about um, titled Who's That Girl, Best Friend of Me's Forever, and Hugs and Disses are not present on the Sophie GTV uh, YouTube channel, but on her old channel called Sophie Garrett. You can also see like a huge difference in quality between these first two episodes specifically and the rest of the series. See, the first episode of the series was uploaded on July 15th, 2010, while the third was uploaded September 5th, 2010, and then the fourth titled New Girl in Town was uploaded on the Sophie G YouTube channel on September 10th, 2010. I bring these dates up because it's possible Sophie could have upgraded equipment during this time, but considering Sophie Garrett, like Sophie Garrett YouTube channel has been around since June of 2008, like I said, the first two episodes could simply be re-uploads, possibly with the series like garnering attention. But these first two episodes especially are very important. They're connected and they get us established with everything we know about this show, pretty much. This is where we meet our uh, main character, 16 year old Savannah Reed for the first time as she's finding out she'll be moving from Montana to California because her dad got a job offering as a sales representative. Unlike the usual click trope of like, new girl in town, Savannah is very excited to be moving. Not only is California the same state where her best friend 
Brookie, also known as Brooklyn, Hayes had moved three years ago for high school, but Savannah will be actually attending the very same high school she transferred to called Orange County Day, also known as OCD for short. This is a huge change considering up until this point, Savannah has actually only been homeschooled, but as I said, she's honestly really looking forward to the thought of potentially reuniting with her long lost best friend in general. So it's made this change very enjoyable for her. But what she doesn't realize is Brooklyn, now known to her new classmates as Brooke, isn't really too keen on reviving that friendship. In fact, she isn't keen on Savannah in general. Over the past couple of years since she's moved, they slowly lost contact. And Brooke basically started kind of ghosting her, if you will, like not answering calls and emails anymore, which Savannah's parents immediately found odd considering, you know, how close they used to be when she lived in Montana. However, Savannah hasn't thought too much about it. This comes to a complete shock to her upon reuniting with Brooklyn at school. And immediately she just sees Savannah as a threat to her population popularity and her relationship with her boyfriend Sage Bond. It becomes clear immediately that Brooke is truly like prepared to do with Savannah what she does with every threat that comes in her way, take them down. Before her short-lived reunion with Brooklyn though, Savannah befriends Angelina Davis and Genevieve Ryan, who she thinks are out to get her after they try to warn her about Brooklyn and how she's obviously not the same person she was back in her elementary days. She is so in denial about this that she actually makes a bet with the girls that she'll prove that Brooke is just the nicest person in the world by sitting with her table at lunch later. Don't fear though, um, at the beginning of episode three, Hugs and Disses, she does realize this was a stupid thing to do and the girls make up at the beginning of lunch. However, Savannah does go through with her plan and Brooke actually leads her out of the cafe. Yes, they have a cafe, not a the cafeteria. They're a fancy preppy school, remember. But she leads Savannah out of the cafe and behind a vending machine in the hallway by the lockers. It is here where Savannah realizes she's in for an extremely just rude awakening. Following this, we witness um, just such an iconic montage of her ripping all the photos and posters of her and Brooke that she had up in her new room at her house. Later in this episode too, um, when Brooklyn is just calling Savannah and her new friends losers, not really important, but I couldn't help but notice, look at these turtles in the back. Oh. Are you three looking for the way back to Loserville? What is going on? Anyway, it's not initially the plan, but eventually they come to realize that Savannah could very well be the one to dethrone Brooke in popularity if they play their cards right. And this is what ends up driving Brooke to the brink of insanity, really, as the show progresses. So step one of this process is obviously Savannah getting a quote unquote makeover and going wardrobe shopping, which she confesses that she can't obviously afford to do. But luckily, Lena and Jenny are willing to help her out and even suggest Savannah go blonde. But Savannah's mom is absolutely not having that and she ends up settling for a natural red instead. Honestly, as one of uh, her friends ends up saying, it would have been like she was copying Brooke anyway. Also, I don't know why her mom is so shocked to see like, or to hear that her like her friends have cars or a chauffeur. You sent her to a preppy rich private school. But it's within episode four, New Girl in Town, that a major part of Savannah's character begins. I want to give a important disclaimer here and just trigger warning, although this show is made with plastic children's toys, still a prominent part of the plot is disordered eating. So if you you want to click off now, I will not be offended. It's not something I'm going to dive into as deep as I probably could, since personally it's not something I've experienced, so I just think it's not really my place to, you know, insert my opinions. However, I do feel like it should be touched on, though. I mean, how can it not when it's so prominent in the show, especially between our main characters Savannah and Brooke? Anyway, I bring this up because in episode four, Savannah starts having like body self-confidence issues and comparing herself to Brooke. So she ends up skipping dinner and even breakfast the next day when leaving to go to the mall with her friends. This unfortunately becomes a consistent pattern in the series and continues from now on. I mean, episode five is quite literally titled Calories in Competition. That should just be very telling on its own. Anyways, it's after this that the girls get escorted to the mall by Lena's driver, whose name is Scorpius. I just want to say that out loud because it's really funny. He's so, like, I love Scorpius. Anyway, um, we, get, we get this shopping makeover montage and Scorpius failing to, you know, keep up with them in the process. Also, I swear, this makeover sequence, like, changed my life at seven years old. Like, I was just so amazed. I think it's kind of funny that um, Savannah, like, changed dog breeds in the process. Like, literally later in the series, there's a part where she's talking to her parents and she's like, I'm a wiener dog. 
Cats are smaller and more delicate than us. I'm a dachshund, not an elephant. But like, the, her parents are both still beagles. Like, what are we talking about? But it's in episode five, Calories in Competition, that Savannah does her grand reveal of her new look at school. And every time I watch this show, I want to start saying things ironically, like, what the tail? Holy chihuahua for barking out loud. You're peanut butter and jealous of me. Okay, that one's jumping too far ahead, but we do get a scene that's kind of just as iconic here. Well, at least I didn't borrow my hair color from a carrot. You're right, Brooke. It looks like you borrowed it from a banana. When Brooke is absolutely furious that people are just eating up Savannah's new look. And to make things funnier, a mid-argument, she just, she just fucking leaves like, I might add, is a nicer color than orange. Something wrong here, babe? Oh, hey, Sagey. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, turning around now. But um, it's with this interaction that Jenny and Lena um, realize that Brooke is obviously jealous and nobody's really stood up to her like that uh, before Savannah. So she could truly be the one to, to dethrone Brooke, uh, bring her down, overthrow her if you will. After this conversation though, um, Jenny and Savannah head to English and I couldn't help but notice um, how Rachel has a Blackberry. When in the previous episode, the teacher got mad at her for texting and she goes, um, this isn't a phone. Actually, it's an iPhone. <laughs> But OMG, I also have to highlight the editing. Oh, it's just so good. Like, this is why I aspired to be at 10 years old. If you don't know, I actually started doing YouTube as an LPS tuber. I've had multiple channel names like LPS Mustache, Mad Hatter LPS, and LPS Storm to name a few, which I ended up naming my actual dog after at the time. I was that kid who'd change their profile photo like all the time and post multiple videos a day, but Hey, I mean, it paid off in some ways. Anyway, uh, Brooke wasn't gonna just like let that slide and needed uh, to plot something against Savannah and very quick. So after Alicia, who I'll talk more about later, she suggests ink and then Rachel's pen explodes ink all over Savannah and then she claims it was an accident. We all know it's not. Luckily when Rachel offers to take Savannah to the office, Sage actually steps in and takes her instead. Um, they hadn't really formally met before this point so literally this is their first conversation. Sage basically apologizes and warns Savannah that it wasn't an accident and Rachel would have probably done worse if she took Savannah to the office. And Sage even lets her like use his phone to like call her mom to pick her up since she doesn't have her own and she never gets a phone throughout this series. She's the only one who doesn't have a phone. And for some reason, just everyone knows her house number. Like, even the stalker that ends up popping in later in the series. But it's from this point on, it's established pretty much that Savannah has a crush on Sage. And her friends think she should totally just go for it. Especially since that's one step closer to dethroning Brooke, which I think is a horrible way to put it. But shortly after this, um, Savannah's mom lets her know that dinner's ready. And Savannah, once again, says she's not hungry, but her mom knows something's up. Savannah knows that her mom is catching on and doesn't want her mom to worry about her so she actually does eat some dinner but the doorbell conveniently rings when they sit down to eat so she actually is just able to get up and throw the rest of her food away but with the pressure of now pleasing sage under her belt this only adds another reason in savannah's mind for her to continue not eating in the next episode episode six moments of reflection this plotline really only continues um, when the next day she gets a poetry partner project assigned in English and ends up asking Sage to be her partner to which he says yes and because they have about a week to work on the project they decide they should probably meet up and get it done so Savannah suggests that they should do the project at her house and Sage could come over after school and he actually agrees Savannah's friends also show concern for her in this episode uh, because they've noticed the fact that she's not been eating as often but she claims you know she just had a big breakfast when that is obviously not true. I bring this up now because Brooke hadn't commented on Savannah's weight at all up until this point. It was more of like an internal thing because now she feels like she has this rivalry with Brooke. But after hearing about Savannah's interactions with Sage, um, Brooke comes over to Savannah's table and starts asking her if she's had any luck with her weight loss journey and calls her a sausage, which causes Savannah to just run off in tears. Also, I find it kind of funny that her friends treat wiener dog like it's a slur or something i feel like that is the least mean thing that she called savannah in that conversation like the constant thing she gets referred to as brooke and her crew is sausage anyway so let's have that be the unspoken word please it's also during this episode that we find out brooke is not eating and later when sage comes over after school savannah's mom ends up bringing them a snack and savannah of course mentions not being hungry and then sage says 
And I quote, Oh great, you're not doing that starving thing, are you? Brooke does that all the time. It's so annoying. Hey, aren't you gonna eat? Oh, nah, I'm not hungry. Oh great, you're not doing that starving thing, are you? Brooke does that all the time. It's so annoying. No, I'm totally not doing that. But by the end of this episode, it's clear that Sage has also caught feelings for Savannah as they spend this study session, really just getting to know each other and really not getting that much work done in the process. He's basically faced with the difficult decision of like, you know, breaking up with Brooke for Savannah. The next episode, episode seven, All Fair in Love and War, opens with a nightmare Savannah has where like the whole school is calling her a and she's so freaked out that she wakes up in the middle of the night and we get this montage of her working out until she quite literally passes out. This was the point that solidified it for me that it's literally everywhere you turn watching the series um, is the theme of eating disorders, especially with Savannah because she's our main character and the show is mostly through her perspective, I feel. Like, we've seen Brooke's side of the same situation like once in the school's cafe so far, but that's literally it. The other scene um, we open up to is Sage practicing in his room at his house what to say to Savannah seemingly and Brooke, but he's still like kind of in the clouds about what he's asking. It's just very very obvious. Like, I guess the context isn't needed much anyways. He also brings a rose, which he hides from Savannah when, like, he goes... when she comes up to him, like, later that morning. We also cut to Brooke and her crew, and she's just pissed, of course. Um, I found it funny that Rachel suggests throwing juice on Savannah, and Brooke says, throw juice? What are you, second grade? As if two episodes ago, she literally didn't let Rachel spill pen ink all over Savannah. What is the difference, genuinely? Anyway, it's with this that she decides on her own to manipulate Sage into thinking Savannah is a malicious person by fake crying, um, cause she knows, like, he hates to make her cry. And she admits to her crew later on that she was able to fake tears by thinking of her cricket Mitzi that got ran over by a car? But she ends up lying to him that Savannah, um, told her that she was fat, even though Brooke is the one that called Savannah fat. And as we know too, you know, before even Brooke said anything to Savannah, the pressure of this rivalry literally fueled an eating disorder for Savannah. You know, she would never say that to begin with is my point. Oh, and also she claims that Savannah said she had a big tail and then to make sure he's like 100% convinced, she says, Oh, look at me, Sage. Look at me. I'm crying. She's horrible. And she was the exact same way back in Montana. Although after all that, he still asks, are you sure? And she straight up makes up a whole other lie about, you know, her telling Lena that it's her goal this year to kiss all the boys on the football team. And she's starting with Sage, um, which by the way, Sage is the captain of the football team, even though we never see anything related to football in this show. But anyway, she claims that Savannah is only starting with Sage for this challenge of hers because Sage is the dumbest. And then to top it all off, she claims that Savannah has like a rare skin disease and that she's contagious. Oh, I'm so scared. Because he promised to go to her house again after school that morning, but he ends up blowing her off um, in what is supposed to be like a serious scene, but it's actually like the most unserious thing ever because he claims he's busy the whole month. Do you want to stay over for dinner again today? <clears throat> um, yeah, about that. It's not gonna work out today. Oh, okay. That, yeah, that's totally fine. How about tomorrow? Um, no. I'm kind of busy for the whole month. And then just ask Savannah to email him her part of the project when she's done, to which she's like, what? I, I don't have your email. When you're done your project, just email it to me or something. Uh, what? I don't, I don't have your email. And he replies, yeah, I gotta go. Yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> what? To make things worse, after sharing with her crew what she said to Sage, Brooke decides to rub it in her face, in her words, by telling Savannah these lies so she's very much aware of like what she's done and so other people at school can overhear. The same episode ends with Savannah running off in tears and then when she sees Sage further down the hallway, he won't even talk to her. 
and the rose he had been hiding um, at the beginning of the episode, he actually throws away in a trash can. The next episode, episode eight, Angel or Devil, exactly takes off exactly where we left off. Lena and Jenny end up finding Savannah sobbing behind a vending machine in the hallway, and they decide to ultimately ditch class and um, go to the school's basement where they know they won't be caught skipping. It's here where Savannah gets dizzy and Lena offers her a granola bar she had in her like bag because Savannah accidentally admitted that she didn't have breakfast. Then we go to, one of the coolest scenes, which is horrible to say, it's where she has these little like little angel and devil on her shoulder moments. Although when I first watched this, I didn't quite understand she was battling an eating disorder. I just thought the editing was really fucking cool. You know, I was six when this specific episode actually dropped on YouTube, so I shouldn't have been watching this really. <laughs> but something more important happens here within this episode where we find out Brooke has kind of always been this way in a way. Savannah is very much convinced that Brooke is to blame for Sage hating her now basically because she can be convincing when she needs to in her words. So we get this like flashback sequence of the girls when they were back in Montana. Basically Savannah says she bought a new outfit which Brooke had tried on and loved but Savannah says she wants to wear it the next day to which Brooke replies, Savvy, I thought we were best friends. Girl what are you talking about? And this is like a brand new outfit keep in mind that she just bought. Let her wear the outfit, my god. Anyway, she goes on further to say that, you know, she has to wear something pretty if Peter is ever going to notice her. And re-watching this, I gotta say, Savannah being homeschooled is like the most confusing part of this series. It does not add, well, it adds up in certain aspects, but in others it doesn't because I never noticed that until re-watching it this time that she was even homeschooled for some reason, I don't know. I think I actually just forgot, but maybe Brooke wasn't homeschooled? I don't know, this scene was just kind of conflicting. Anyway, it turns out Savannah also likes Peter and it's probably why she got the outfit and she wants to wear it to begin with. Brooke ends up doing the same thing she did to Sage today where, you know, just saying that Peter will never like her and she's ugly and she breaks down sobbing to Savannah, which in return convinces Savannah um, to let her borrow the outfit. <gasps> Brooke turned on the waterworks just to manipulate him. This episode also marks an important character arc for Savannah. As the series progresses, she ultimately becomes colder and more popularity driven overall than before because she hates Brooke just hates her so much. And it's in this episode in a way that she snaps, like, and decides that she really just wants to be the one to stand up to Brooke and dethrone her for good. That she doesn't want to let Brooke get to her or anyone else anymore because it just gives her the power. Savannah also meets Tom in this episode when she runs out of the cafe as a part of this lie. She's been convincing her friends that she's had no appetite because of a stomach bug, but she runs into Tom on her way there. And by run in, I mean like literally runs into him. Luckily he's nice, he doesn't believe all the rumors going around, and they have a laugh about it in fact. Then the episode ends with Sage basically telling us that he had a crush on Savannah, as if it wasn't obvious, but he's debating it in his head only, and he is still kind of in shock of if she would even do something like this, like what Brooke claims, which obviously she would not do, but you know, she is a new girl. He doesn't really know that much about her to begin with. But when Sage mentions Brooke crying, we actually cut to her crying in real time um, at her house. And this is the first time we've actually ever seen her house besides her being on the phone once with Rachel, we just get a shot of her room. The reason she's so upset though is because she's gained three pounds and in her mind, she can't eat dinner for at least a week. She also compares herself to Savannah and how she's so beautiful now, probably even prettier than her. Very much the same situation that Savannah is in with her comparing herself to Brooke constantly because of this rivalry. Um, which, you know, it's very unhealthy. And even more so now that she's on a mission to not let Brooke get away with things anymore. This is just a very raw moment and it's here, it's solidified that Brooke is only doing this 
out of insecurity. It's always been about insecurity from the beginning. We also learn about her home life, like her mother is literally never home, and it's very much an example of money doesn't bring happiness, but some assistant of her mother's like lets her know that her mom's left a note in which she says, you know, she wouldn't be home until Brooke is in bed. Hearing this immediately, Brooke is pissed and it's clear that this is just a pattern with her mom. I will mention this more as we go on, but a lot of Brooke's behavior is a result of her home life, which should not be any sort of excuse, but, but it is good to note because she's constantly not having any sort of guidance from an adult in her life and she's really just left with her own thoughts most of the time. And besides the rivalry with Savannah, the other thing feeling her disordered eating is actually her mom. Because she also says in the note not to eat any carbs because Brooke has been looking puffy lately, which is how would you even know? You're never home to begin with? So it's not only a comparison thing like Savannah, she's also seeking her mother's approval. Also, I just realized I never mentioned this through the course of my script, but actually her dad was alive back when she lived in Montana. So this could be a contributor to why she's acting like this now and why she's in this living situation and drastic changes have happened in her life since um, living in Montana with Savannah. Speaking of moms, Savannah actually ended up asking for her mom's advice on the whole situation with Sage, to which she thinks that if he would believe rumors about Savannah, then he's clearly not worth her time. The next morning and the opening of episode 9, Show Him What He's Missing, is all about showing him what he's missing, of course. That's what Savannah's mom says in a letter to Savannah because she had to leave the house early for work today. Savannah's new tone shift definitely like shows too because she shows up to school and addresses multiple rumors being spread about her, which gets people to actually respect her instead of before when she was just taking it too personally. Savannah even goes as far to let her teacher know that her partner refuses to cooperate with her, so she'd be doing future projects alone, but conveniently Tom shows up and it turns out he's actually transferred into the class. So he takes Sage's spot actually and becomes Savannah's new partner. It's here that Tom actually invites Savannah to sit at his table during lunch, pulling the classic, there's a girl I've had my eye on and I would say you know her pretty well. Also turns out Tom is a part of the football team, he's a football player, so it's the football player's table the girls are going to be sitting at, which is a very, very big deal because usually it's only their girlfriends that sit at that table. So the whole lunchroom is immediately like shocked and picks up what's happening as soon as they walk over to the table and sit down. Obviously, knowing Brooke, she is furious, um, which you're probably like, why? She wanted Sage to herself and she's got that. That. Well, she said to her crew back in episode 7, All Fair in Love and War, that she's not the type of girl to get cheated on, but the type of girl that boys cheat with. Which is not the flex you think it is, Brooklyn Hayes. Anyway, uh, we get a flashback of her making out with Tom, um, so seeing him with Savannah once again, it, she just takes it personally. But unfortunately for her in episode 10, things are going to get ugly. Things continue to come to plan for Savannah with popularity, um, her popularity just rising by the hour, really. She also starts getting all sorts of compliments, just like Brooke notes she would usually. But no one's even told Brooke that they like her outfit today. She also keeps complaining that Sage hasn't come to visit her, um, during lunch and math class. Brooke does attempt to go up to Tom and make some sort of deal with him, but overall it seems like Tom has just rejected that when Savannah, you know, catches them talking in the hall because the bell actually rang shortly after she decided to walk up to him in the hallway and the rest of this episode is spent with Brooke just talking to herself in her room about how Savannah is coming for her crown and school popularity and she's gonna need to show everyone who truly rules the school and then she says the name of the episode things are going to get ugly. Also, the way Lena was treated in this episode was just absolutely infuriating to me. It was like she was talking to a brick wall, for all we know. Like, Savannah's supposed to be talking to two of her friends, but really, it was just Jenny. Jenny spent lunch basically talking to Nathan, and Savannah had Tom, and Lena? Lena had nobody! And the cherry on top was like, these two girls came up to compliment Savannah and also complimented Jenny, and Lena was just like, do I even exist? And I'm not kidding, she said that. Uh... Do I exist? But naturally, in episode 11, revenge isn't always sweet. Um, it opens with Brooke holding an emergency meeting with her crew about how they need to figure out something quick because Savannah is stealing their spotlight. Also, for the past few episodes, Brooke can barely even bring herself to say Savannah's name. That's how upset she is. So she's made a rule within her crew that no one can speak her name. And now they can only refer to her as 
bitch, of course, because what else would they call her? Savannah? Savvy? But anyway, she just basically says they need to refresh everyone's memory about why they are popular in the first place, but things truly only continue to go to plan for Savannah. And as things are going to plan for Savannah, you know who we don't see in this episode? Lena! You know how they say that trio friendships don't work? Yeah. In fact, in the next episode, The Rise and Fall of Brocades, um, hey, isn't that just the show called LPS Popular on YouTube? <laughs> Anyway, the next episode opens with Jenny and Savannah being like insufferable as Lena is actually trying to get some work done. And when she asks if they plan to get any work done, Savannah just says, we're too pretty to work. Be so serious right now, Savannah. And then when Jenny brings up how she's been texting Nathan all week, Lena says, hey, you know, um, he's literally dating Rachel. To which Jenny just sees Lena as some kind of buzzkill, honestly. And then Savannah asks if she's actually seeing anyone, to which Lena says, no. And then Savannah responds with, well, you better do that soon. Are you not literally the one who said you'd find her a boy two episodes ago? Uh, I didn't. Well, don't worry, Lena. We'll fix that. We've lost the plot. And then when Tom calls Savannah, things only get worse, and Lena ends up saying, hey guys, I'm gonna leave. To which nobody even cares, or responds actually, and she just leaves. <laughs> oh my god. So, have you ever kissed yeah. a boy before? Bye. Bye. And then the next day, um, she literally insults Lena's outfit as if Jenny and Lena didn't literally buy her all her clothes to begin with. Angelina, I'm sorry, but what on earth are you wearing? It's a scarf. The character derailment of Savannah Reed, it just happens so damn fast. It hits you like a semi truck. Anyway, Brooke actually walks over before Lena can even respond anything back and starts claiming Savannah is stealing her boyfriend as if she isn't already seeing Tom and not interested in Sage anymore? Sage has been the one trying to talk to Savannah, if anything, but just like Lena, it's like talking to a brick wall at this point. But within this conversation, Brooke admits to making sure Sage um, wanted nothing to do with her, which Savannah had already suspected. This conversation though is iconic for another reason. We get the infamous peanut butter and jealous of me line. Well, let's face it, Brooke. Your problem is that you're 100% peanut butter and jealous of me. Mm -hmm. Ugh, is that what you eat for lunch every day, Brooke? A peanut butter and jealous sandwich? But anyway, um, on the phone last night, Tom actually told Savannah he had something very special at lunch and to come sit at his table, because she hadn't for a while. While this is happening, Brooke is actually eating chocolate cake and then kisses Sage like unprovoked, which upsets him and gets like chocolate all over his face. And then Lena once again has nowhere to sit at the football table and is basically being excluded. But basically Tom has Savannah get on the table and gets the attention of the whole lunchroom. He gives her this necklace and asks her to be his girlfriend. And then when she says yes, they make out in front of everyone. Aww. This gets Brooke so mad that she shoves the cake off the table and she drags Sage onto the top of the table and she starts making out with him even though he already asked her to stop and is clearly upset. And in an act to get away from her, they end up falling directly into the cake that Brooke shoved off the table. At this point now, everyone's eyes are on them, even Tom and Savannah, who are just extremely confused. Sage, of course, is absolutely pissed and runs off, which causes Brooke to run off in tears, and then she ends up skipping school with her crew. The next episode, episode 13, Operation Fry the Sausage, is kind of filler as we build up to arguably um, the most iconic episode in the series, or one of. And as her crew is ditching school at some, like, cafe, it's here that Brooke comes up with a plan to throw a huge party that the whole school is invited to. There will be dancing, food, photographers, and you are encouraged to show up in costume, but it's not required. Shortly after this, Sage apologizes to Brooke for... Uh? For what? I'm so confused, honestly. But with their third anniversary, ironically being this weekend, there's an opportunity to make up... make it up to her, I guess. Once hearing about the party, Tom and Savannah actually decide to go to the party together and actually make it their first official date. It's also now that they notice Lena just isn't there. And Jenny says, she's been disappearing lately, so casually. Like your friend isn't hanging out with you at lunch anymore and you just aren't concerned. But she says she'll let Lena know to meet at Savannah's um, house after school so they can like discuss the party and their plans because Jenny has her next class with Lena anyways. And when they meet up with Savannah after school, she basically debriefs like Brooke's exact plan and says they need to look their best in order to keep the eyes on them at this party. So Savannah actually suggests because you know, her makeover they gave her was so life changing that next Lena and Jenny should get makeovers too. 
Savannah also finally addresses, um, honestly the elephant in the room, that Jenny and her have been excluding Lena lately and apologizes to her for doing so and saying that she's never meant to hurt her with anything she said. She actually admits to getting carried away with boys and her newfound popularity as well, but she says that she'll never forget that Lena was the first person to help her when it came to OCD. I'm sorry, that abbreviation and the serious tone of this conversation is so fucking funny to me. Nobody has OCD, she's actually talking about the school, Orange County Day. Lena ends up forgiving them and says that she still meant what she said about Savannah definitely being able to overthrow Brooke. And the episode actually ends with Brooke on a call with Tom talking about her plan that she has for the party tomorrow, Operation Fry the Sauce. This leads um, into the most viewed episode of the series ever with nearly 7 million views titled Party of the Century. And yes, it's on the board. I knew I had to put it on the board. And it's also episodes 14 through 17 that happen at the party and both 16 and 17 are the series finale. So I won't be mentioning episode numbers anymore for these series of events because it'd be too tedious. Anyway, this episode opens up with Brooke and her crew um, gathering their supplies for their plan that includes black hair dye, super bonding glue, and Brooke even mentions putting her own twist on things, which calls for some eggs and hair removal cream. They don't need the supplies now, so the episode opens with them putting, um, like hiding them in a hiding spot until it's needed for later. Following this scene, the party officially starts and oh my God, this episode really changed my brain chemistry specifically. What Sophie used for the lights is, it's like this mini disco ball light type thing. Like the ones you always see at the arcade, but you can never actually win. I used to want one of these so damn bad. Like I would try for it every single time I went to my local like miniature golfing place because they had them in like the prize case, but I never had enough tickets no matter how hard I tried. But it's after the party starts and she opens the doors that um, Lena and Jenny's makeovers make their kind of official debut because they skipped school that day to do these makeovers, so no one's expecting this at all. They arrive and the party quite literally stops for them. How iconic is that? No need to stop the party for us, guys. Anyway, Brooke actually paid these guys to tell her when Sage, Tom, and Savannah get there, and they forget to inform her about Sage and Tom, but after she complains, she does get alerted that Savannah has arrived, which is arguably more important to this plan anyway. Shortly after this, phase one of the plan really starts to go down, and she signals for Tom to follow her upstairs. And Tom is actually dancing with Savannah, so he says he's gonna go get them some punch um, as his excuse, which, you know, she buys for a minute or two before she leaves Lena to see what's taking so long. And with this, she notices obviously the inconsistency and in that he's not by the punch bowl. I swear, it's always Lena at the scene of the crime. Why is she always the one being left? You know, girl, you deserve better friends. Anyway, one of the guys that Brooke paid to inform uh, Sa of Savannah's arrival is there and he says that he thought he saw Tom go upstairs. So we can kind of infer what happens here next. Savannah catches Tom cheating on her with Brooke and it's at the very same time that Rachel is now realizing Nathan is cheating on her with Jenny. So double whammy with the cheating this episode. Oh my God. And when he gets caught, he just breaks up with her on the spot. It's pathetic really. Except the difference with this cheating situation is that Brooke has been trying to warn her about Nathan for a while now, but she just didn't listen to her. And Nathan literally asked Brooke to go make out with him in math class as Rachel was sitting right next to Brooke, but Rachel didn't even believe her about it. Following this, um, Rachel finds Alicia who ended up getting really, really, really drunk. And Sage comes up to them as their mid conversation about potential leaving the party to ask where Brooke is because because she disappeared like 10 minutes ago so she tells him about Operation Fry the Sock and Rachel says there's something upstairs he should really see but unfortunately it's too late as he runs into Tom on his way up who seems to be in a very huge hurry oh and also we meet Megan here which is barely a major character I think she would have been more important if the show had continued and progressed further maybe Megan is basically Brooke's ex-best friend 
who she hates because of some guy Brooke liked in like eighth grade. She also was a part of Tom's scheme to get Brooke to date him like a year ago that failed. Sage ends up uh, witnessing this confrontation and calls Brooke out on it as soon as Megan leaves. Basically ends things with her because he's been hearing stuff for a while and this was really just the proof he needed about her true character. After which Sage comes downstairs to the party and he runs into Savannah who's literally in shambles because she just saw Tom cheat on her and she's actually looking frantically for her friends but you know they run into each other and the two of them decide now would be a good time to talk about how things went down before so Sage says he knows a place they can go um, for privacy since um, he knows his way around Brooke's house. Luckily for them they leave at literally the perfect time and then Brooke ends up having like a fight with her crew and it turns out they never really sent Savannah upstairs. She just ended up upstairs by chance and Rachel confesses that she doesn't really want to be a part of the plan anymore. Meanwhile, Sage and Savannah are clearing the air about everything Brooke said about Savannah and how it was all a lie. And Sage is upset with himself now for believing her and he admits um, a part of himself just really wanted to believe the girl that he had been dating for the past three years was perfect, but he had clearly been wasting his time. It's then at this very moment, Rachel um, at the same time gets kicked out of the group by Brooklyn because she stood up for herself. Whoa! Stood up for herself and, you know, what she felt wasn't right here. Brooke also admits she made out with Nathan, so of course, you know, her warning Rachel was never coming from a place of actually caring about her. Wow! I am so shocked! So with that, Brooke and Alicia, who is too dumb or too drunk to care about what's happening, go ahead and do phase two of the plan. At the same time, Sage has just confessed he has feelings for Savannah and that's what he was going to tell her, you know, the day he had that rose and everything, but they never ended up meeting after school, of course. This leads them to making out in this closet they've hidden, which is actually the same place that they hid all their supplies at the beginning of this episode, or the beginning of the party, I mean. And Alicia and Brooke end up walking in on them making out. Somehow, at the exact same time, Tom just like spawns out of nowhere, or not really out of nowhere, we just like don't get context for why he's there suddenly with Brooke and Alicia until the next episode. Episode 16, the fallout for context, so he just seems really out of place at first. Why are you acting like he didn't just cheat on Savannah too? Like, I mean, he didn't, he didn't actually end it, we'll get into it in a minute, but it gets that, that impression is set, so like, I don't know why he's shocked. Brooke promises him another taste um, if he helps her, which he doesn't care about, he's just pissed for some reason that, you know, that hasn't been mentioned yet and he follows her just because he needs to talk to her so that's why he's there. What's also important about this episode is the iconic LPS popular intro sequence with the song Bad Girls by Girls Love Shoes um, debuts here. It's also so weird watching this now as someone who's like had editing experience and edits my own content because this seems so complex to 10 year old me but I could simply make that myself now. I don't mean that as an insult like it's just cool to see the evolution of like stuff I really wanted to create. Anyway this episode is is uh, where all the confirmation goes down between, you know, Brooke, Savannah, Sage, and Tom. All of this would be solved with communication, but we'll get into it. All of them naturally start screaming at each other until Alicia has to literally yell at them to shut up. Also, it's no secret that Alicia is like actually so fucking dumb. Like dumbed down like Lindsay was in Total Drama All-Stars, voting herself off dumb. But just like that could have been a part of Lindsay's calculated plan to get the hell off that island as fast as she could, Alicia goes from being the dumbest bitch in this entire show to fucking manhandling Brooke before she can attack Savannah and getting a hold of this situation before it spirals, um, it's just in general. Brooke, step away from Savannah before she presses charges. Once Alicia gets everyone to settle down, Tom ends up bringing up his plan where he paid Megan to date him basically so he could have a shot at getting together with Brooke about a year ago because Brooke hates Megan to an extreme degree as we've seen. So that explains the flashback in earlier episodes where Tom Tom is cheating on someone with Brooke and when she says, you know, she's the type of girl guys cheat with, not on. Turns out she was broken up with Sage during this time because they had gotten in some argument, but shortly after she started um, that fling with Tom, they ended up breaking it off because she got back together with Sage and Tom began to realize, you know, she may be pretty, but she's actually a pretty awful person. So now flash forward a year, Savannah moves to California, starts attending OCD, and Tom just immediately falls for her. You know, she's pretty, she's smart, and she's a nice person. Shortly after this though, Brooke has to come in and ruin it. When she wanted Tom to help her with her operation, fry the which he obviously declined. Unlucky for him though, Brooke decided she needed to get her way and she started blackmailing Tom with a video that she shared to YouTube of them making out from the 10th grade, 
which she recorded with um, the intent of sending to Megan, but dug it back up uh, for the intent of showing Savannah to think Tom was cheating on her. So Tom decided to follow everything she said, and the deal was if he helped her at the party, then she'd delete the video for good, and you know, he believed her. He believed that she would stay true to her word, but he admits he was dumb for trusting and believing her. He assumed that she wanted him to come upstairs for getting, helping with whatever she wanted. He saw this as, oh, I'm getting this over with now, thank God. But instead, she started just making out with Tom forcibly. After Samantha caught them and ran off, Tom ended up flipping out on Brooke and saying he couldn't do this anymore, that he couldn't do this to her, and that he liked Savannah, not Brooke, and he didn't want to kiss her. By that point though, it didn't matter anymore because it was too late. Savannah had already seen, and you know, phase one of Fry Operation Fry the Sock had already commenced. Even though Rachel, who was supposed to tell Savannah to go upstairs, never did, it happened coincidentally. Following this revelation though, Rachel actually spawned out of nowhere and she revealed that Brooke had been cheating on Sage with Nathan in exchange for math homework, so she had still cheated on him. And then to top it off, they expose Operation Fry the to Savannah before it even has the chance to happen, which is actually really dangerous and literally could have caused Savannah to go blind potentially. But Brooke's only response to all this is, baby please, I'm sorry. And then throwing herself onto Sage once again, who is clearly disgusted and just informed her that they are completely done, they are over. And it's just extremely pathetic and extremely hard watch. And it's after this that Tom, Rachel, Alicia, Sage, and Savannah all leave the party and the DJ announces the next song is actually dedicated to Broken Sage for the three year anniversary, which is just kind of like perfect timing, honestly. But Sage and Savannah here and they're like, well, this is awkward, but let's dance. Aww. So they stay to dance. This is where Brooke's insanity really starts, okay? Cause Brooke sees this and she's immediately just in absolute shambles and yells at everyone to get out of her house. Truly just such a satisfying ending of this episode. And you know, to make it all better, we end with a shot of Brooke dramatically collapsing to the ground. I wouldn't want it any other way. Episodes 18 and 19 called Savannah and Brooke are connected and follow up basically where we left off from the end of season one. And just like the names suggest, they focus on each of those characters respectively. After leaving the party, Sage took Savannah to the ER where she actually got stitches for the cut Brooke gave her at the party. That is also something I did not mention, but I'm sure that there's B-roll in here too, you know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you know. And then they also stopped at a cafe afterwards. At this point, mind you, it's past like 12 a.m., which definitely gets Savannah in some trouble once she actually comes home. But she has this sweet moment with Sage here, where basically, you remember that one time where Sage came over and Savannah's mom made them a snack and then Savannah lied that she wasn't hungry. And then he brought up that, you know, he hoped she wasn't doing that starving thing because Brooke always does that. Well, he noticed again that Savannah was not hungry when they ordered. And while she went to the bathroom, he actually ordered her the same thing he got, which is like a coffee cake. But of course, when their order arrived, Savannah was confused and asked Sage, hey, like, did you order this for me? And it was in this moment that Sage had a moment with her and reassured her that she was beautiful and didn't need to be doing that and that she truly needed to eat something if she was hungry. And then we fast forward to where the episode takes place, which is two to three weeks later. And Savannah is actually on a regular eating schedule and eating meals again and is honestly the happiest she's ever been in general, which she says herself. But one thing to highlight too is she never even told her mom that it was Brooke that like did that to her face like when she had to get stitches. She lied that she fell down some stairs. And it's just funny to see that now considering what conspires later on because things could have been so different if she had actually told her mom, hey, Brooke did this to me. The aftermath could have been so different just if she had like informed her mom or anyone else on that little thing. But anyway, speaking of Brooke, um, the best part of all this has been the fact that Brooke hasn't shown up to school since the party happened and nobody's even heard from her, in fact. The other major thing that happens in episode 18 though, besides a life update, is we see the introduction to the character Brigitte, aka uh, Sage's cousin from France. Well, okay, not really his cousin. Their families are basically close friends, I guess. So she's like family to him. And she said herself, they've known each other since they were babies. So she really considers Sage like a brother. But the way this episode ends so abruptly with Brigitte just saying, me and Sage are living together. Sage and me are living together. What? 
When Savannah says, you two know each other, I shouldn't laugh, but it was so dramatic. But as far as Brooke Hayes goes, she spent the last three weeks miserable and alone, with ultimately herself to blame for what happened in the end. And the school has been calling, because she hasn't been there in like three weeks. But, you know, because of how absent Brooke's mother is from her life, she can just easily erase the messages like nothing happened, and her mom doesn't even know that she hasn't been going to school. We also see firsthand the dynamic between Brooke and her mother when Brooke is eating some ice cream at 3 a.m. and instead of asking like, hey, why are you so up late? Don't you have school tomorrow? Or is everything okay? Her only concern seems to be, you're eating ice cream? Really? Are you trying to gain weight? What the tail are you doing eating ice cream at 3 a.m.? Are you trying to gain weight? However, shortly after this, Brooke runs off and she does end up apologizing. She notices immediately, hey, like something is off with Brooke. She's not acting like herself. This isn't like you, Brooke. Whatever happened, you need to snap out of it. Now. You're stronger than this, Brooke, and you know it. You're Brooklyn Hayes. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. And when it seems like finally they are going to have that heart-to-heart -heart moment where Brooke could get some actual, like, parental guidance for once, her mom's phone rings. No. Why don't you tell me what happened? <sighs> oh, hold on. Hello? Can you hear me? I've got you on the Bluetooth. Yes, yes, this is she. Oh, no, I don't mind. Of course I have a minute. So instead of even getting to hear what's going on, she just gives Brooke her credit card and says to buy something to make her feel better, but don't go over 3000 Oh, hold on. Brooke, I'd take you out tomorrow, but I'm busy. Here's my credit card. Buy yourself something nice to feel better, okay? Just don't go over 3000 it's at this moment that a tweet notification on her phone goes off and it's from the one and only Sage Bond, which she clicks to see and it's actually a picture of him and Savannah who are officially dating by the way. I don't think I clarified that, but I mean, kind of obvious. And with this, she absolutely snaps, let's just say. <laughs> And during this little breakdown of hers, her only friend she seems to have left, which is her cricket um, named Gigi, runs out of the house in fear. Thus marks the beginning of an extremely important conflict to the plot, um, if you know what I mean. We know what team I'm on. Anyway, episode 20, um, Love Notes, is pretty much filling in all the holes of the last two main character focused episodes didn't cover. Ever since Brooke has been gone, Rachel is like the new Brooke of the school and people actually like her. She has this interaction with Alicia who wonders like, huh, what happened to Brooke? And then says, I kind of miss her. Uh? To which Rachel asks why she'd miss someone who is so mean. I mean, Alicia should know, she's the one who put Brooke in her damn place. Alicia is truly only smart when she feels she needs to be, because this conversation was just so painful to listen to. But most important of all, Savannah is out rollerblading, and she finds a hurt, malnourished cricket in some bushes, which she decides to take home, where she, you know, feeds it, cleans its wounds, and names it Mimi. With the story arc of this cricket, Mimi versus Gigi, we really get some insight into how her mother's parenting, or better yet, lack of parenting, parenting rubbed off on Brooke when it comes to parenting her own cricket. She's done various things like lock it outside all night and even in a future episode refusing to feed Mimi because she doesn't want her getting fat. Oh and we can't forget the expensive toys she's bought to win over this cricket once she gains custody back including a diamond water bowl. You know what? I'm going to get you a brand new diamond water bowl. Which is exactly what her mom does to her, giving her her credit card and saying, go buy something to feel better instead of actually being a parent to her own child. But this episode ends with Savannah expressing how she's a bit uncomfortable with how Brigitte kisses Sage on the cheek, but she also kisses everyone on the cheek, including Savannah. And Sage explains, you know, it's her way of being friendly. So Savannah ultimately brushes it off and heads to her locker, only to find a threatening note basically saying, enjoy Sage while you still can, which is perfect timing considering in the next episode, Brooke makes her return um, to school after three weeks. She ultimately makes up this lie about how she took a spa vacation to Thailand because she was just really stressed, which also caused her outburst um, at her party apparently. Then she introduces everyone to her 
new model boyfriend named Malcolm, which we've never seen this guy before. He's just randomly here. Also, in regards to that note, Savannah is actually convinced it's Brigitte along with Jenny and Lena. So she shows Sage finally, um, who immediately says it has to be Brooke. It has Brooke all written over it. No pun intended. However, again, Savannah is, you know, convinced after a brief pet talk with her friends that it's Brigitte. Personally, I don't think she even considered Brooke a suspect, to be honest, which ultimately causes a brief argument between her and Sage about this. As they are finishing this conversation up, uh, the bell had just rang, and Brooke ends up sneaking up on them right before to give Sage his sweatshirt back and even apologize for messing up Savannah's face, but it's like the most obvious, insincere apology I've ever heard. Also, Sage leaves shortly after this because he can't be late to calculus again, and Savannah briefly confronts Brooke about the note like right after that despite you know thinking it was Brigitte and she also takes this as Savannah feeling ultimately threatened by her as if she didn't just say this note was cute and all but she's not scared of you. As for the Mimi plot, um, Brooke realizes after school that same day that Mimi has disappeared finally and gets so worried that she calls her mom who only gets mad at her and actually just tells her to go buy another cricket. Also, yes, I'm still calling her Mimi and not Gigi. Um, there is only one right answer in this debate. Not only are you a terrible person, but you're an animal abuser too. Like, I don't care that it was your cricket first. Like, you clearly don't know how to take care of a pet. At the same time, Savannah arrives home and it turns out once Mimi woke up and realized she was gone, she cried all day until she came home. This cricket has a lot of trauma. Like, is something we immediately notice. We get this like flashback of Brooke basically saying she'd be back in the evening to feed her, but then she disappears for like three days straight and arrives home to a turd in the house. So she's immediately upset and Mimi has to hide from her. As if you weren't the one who was gone for three days. Like, it's not like she can leave the house. We also get a soft launch of Tom Goes to France for some reason plotline, which I remade because the original shot, um, it was just really small. Like you wouldn't be able to tell if I put a picture that he was in front of the Eiffel Tower. But this specific shot literally took me out. Like I was laughing for a solid five minutes. It's so ominous. Brooke? Yeah, she can totally show her face at school again, but Tom? Now, anyway, in the next episode, episode 22, um, keep an eye on your boy. We only continue with the Savannah hates Brigitte plot, which I'm, I'm sorry, do we really need this right now? I feel like a lot just happened. She walks in on Sage consoling Brigitte basically because her boyfriend Philippe from France just dumped her. So it's cleared up pretty quickly. But when she's talking to Sage after Tom gets brought up and Savannah finally realizes nobody's seen Tom either since the party. She ends up telling her friends later on that she feels horrible and hasn't gotten to apologize and they're convinced that she pretty much broke his heart. She said that she tried calling, but it just went straight to voicemail. Brooke and Savannah also ended up having another, like, little confrontation at school, which only escalates this time. It's truly just because Brooke is trying to scare Savannah out of her own insecurity for what her life has become, I guess. Brooke's mom also buys her another cricket named Lulu. Um, it kind of hates her though. And then we see Savannah basically getting ready for the school day, and Mimi is once again upset that she's, you know, leaving. Leaving. But just as she's about to leave, Savannah gets an idea. An idea that's going to have extreme consequences later on. An idea that will change her life, matter of fact. She grabs a bag so that she can take Mimi to school with her. And when she gets to OCD and starts showing everyone the cricket, which they think is absolutely adorable, by the way, because who wouldn't? But when Brooke, you know, ultimately notices, hey, um, that's my Gigi, she doesn't even say anything. She just takes Mimi away. Like, she grabs the cricket and runs. Like, any sanity that she built up in the past week or so since her return is just gone out the window now. Now, with that being said, you thought the party of the century was an iconic episode? Well, hold your horses and buckle your seatbelts because we've reached episode 23, The Claws Come Out. I don't even need to explain why this episode is so significant. Like, the thumbnail on its own is just very telling. The first half of this episode is the beginning of the Tom, like, France plot. We know he's in France, but we haven't seen much besides him ominously standing in front of the Eiffel Tower. Anyway, the episode opens with some people speaking French, but you know, when he finishes his conversation, we pan to Tom and it's revealed that the guy we were just watching um, on screen that we thought was of no importance is actually Philippe. So it was Brigitte's French BF who just dumped her and is already with someone else, it seems. He's not important or anything. It's just kind of like a fun Easter egg, if you will. But it's revealed shortly after this that Tom is in fact an exchange student and he's no longer attending OCD. We 
also meet another French colleague. Her name is Villette. And when she's talking to Tom, you know, we learn that he came to France for a fresh start. He actually explains the situation to Violette, and she ultimately tells him that maybe Savannah just isn't worth his time then, if he apologized and she picks someone else over him. As the French plot progresses, uh, Violette basically becomes like Tom's rebound in a way, but he is still focused on Savannah at this point in time because it is all so fresh. Also, this is a good time to mention my observation why are all the French characters colleagues? Like sure, Philippe, okay, and the cat in the beginning, but all the other French characters that are, who are like not side characters or irrelevant in the plot, they're all colleagues. Also, all the people transferring to OCD besides Savannah have also been colleagues. You'll see what I mean later, I'll bring it up again, but I just wonder if this was on purpose or not. Anyway, Tom says sometimes he wonders like what Savannah is doing right now, and then it cuts to where we left off in the last episode with Brooke and Savannah basically going at it. Um, Savannah telling Brooke, you know, the whole story about how she found Mimi half dead and nursed her back to health and Brooke like always is just you know convinced she could never do anything wrong and she's actually convinced too that Savannah stole her directly from her house if that even makes sense. Brooke keeps grabbing her from Savannah too which ultimately results in Mimi biting Brooke eventually. After this confrontation Savannah realizes this was a horrible idea and decides to run to take Mimi back home where she knows she'll be safe. Unlucky for Savannah, Brooke ends up sneaking up behind Savannah, digging her claws into her skin and threatening to do worse if she doesn't give Brooke the cricket. As if Mimi wasn't whimpering like crazy after being reunited with Brooke in the same room again and bit her when she kept grabbing her. Savannah ends up biting her in self-defense to which Brooke scratches Savannah on her face again just like she did at the party and was probably gonna wind up doing something way worse when she again sinks her claws into Savannah Savannah's skin, so Savannah, acting out of self-defense once again, pushes her away and it sends her flying into the lockers and Brooke is just laying in a puddle of her own blood. You be with an itch! <laughs> And then when the episode ends, you know, like how I hinted earlier with the, all the transfers to the school or colleagues? Well, we meet these two colleagues, Lana and Josh, who are transferring to OCD, which is exactly what I was talking about. Like, what is this pattern? Also, I don't know why I just said Lana. I'm pretty sure it's Lana. Point is, this plot point was never fully fleshed out with the series being left at a cliffhanger and not having any new episodes since 2019. So we can kind of like set this aside. But the harsh reality of the situation at hand soon sets in during our next episode. When when we find the gra out, like the gravity of what Savannah had inflicted upon Brooke. We also find out that Brooke's mom is absolutely livid and has been threatening um, Savannah's mom to potentially press charges, which Savannah knows her parents cannot afford. Savannah is also being told she has to give the cricket back to Brooke by her mother's request, and um, ult ultimately it's just to avoid any charges being pressed. Even when knowing that Brooke is an animal abuser, she does not have a choice. Brooke's injuries, though, ended up consisting of a broken nose, ankle concussion, etc. And she's also faking that she's delirious and doesn't remember what even happened. She has a concussion, it's just not as severe as she's making it out to be in front of her mom in order to probably gain sympathy, mother's attention, but also because she knows this is going to be bad for Savannah. Also, Rachel ends up visiting Brooke in the hospital and they rekindled their friendship, which is crazy considering she cheated on her boyfriend with yours, but you do you, girl. Nathan was a loser anyway. Yeah, because he cheated on you with your so-called friend. That's the loser behavior. Reluctantly, Savannah ends up visiting Brooke in the hospital like the very next day. And this is to return the cricket and ultimately apologize. This scene was such a hard watch for me. N not just because like it's cringeworthy or anything, because I do feel genuinely bad for Savannah. Savannah has never once like had an ulterior motive against Brooke until she was given one, truly. Her whole life changed at 16, suddenly when she had to move to a whole new state because her dad got a job offering and go to a whole new school, a public school, mind you, where she knew nobody. Well, nobody that was except Brooke. Her only intentions ever were to rekindle something with her long lost friend. And now, now we're here. There's this scene, Savannah in this moment, where she's saying, remember seventh grade when we were best friends? Did that mean anything to you? Bringing that up was kind of her like grasping for straws. Like this has escalated really far. And at the end of the day, she knows if she hadn't acted in self-defense like she did, it would be her in that hospital bed. And considering their history, it's still crazy that it's gotten to the point that it has now. Tell me, Brooke, do you remember anything? Excuse me? Seventh grade, being friends. We were best friends, Brooke. We shared everything. Does that ring a bell for you? Or do you just not give a rat's tail? That was a long time ago. So long ago that you've forgotten everything? 
the memories, how much we meant to each other, you mean nothing to me. Brooke also reveals something important in this conversation though. She brings up receiving photos of Sage and Savannah making out, which she believes Savannah sent her. However, the night before, Savannah ended up sneaking out after her parents um, grounded her and said she needed to go see Brooke to apologize and return the cricket, which had Savannah literally so distressed. Anyway, they end up going to some wooded area and making out um, when they hear something like in the bushes and then Sage goes to investigate something and it like grabs his leg and Savannah ultimately says the eyes were too big for it to be an animal or a bug of some kind but she thought that they were being watched um, so they left like quickly after that. This is now the second time of an instance where someone is being sent something anonymously. Savannah with those notes on her locker and now Brooke receiving photos. It's almost like someone is trying to keep their fighting going, feel the fire if you will. I believe this is like another plot that maybe wasn't fully explored yet um, with the series being inactive but it would have been a very interesting one. What I will say is after this visit, Savannah stops by Sage's and they have a fight because she walked in on him and Brigitte like sitting on his bed together. But something to note is like when they end up having a fight and Brigitte leaves the room eventually, she actually stays around the corner and like listens in on their argument, which I found really weird. Most of the animation Sophie has done in later episodes, I think is kind of cool, but this one scene actually scared the crap out of me, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if she was meant to be looking all devious, but she looks suspicious here. When Savannah heads home after this, um, she ends up getting a call, which her mom says to tell them to stop with the, the prank calls. And it's basically the same type of thing, like the notes on her locker we're talking about. It's weird because when I first watched this scene, I thought no way in hell is Brigitte doing all this, but at the same time, because her character might have not reached its fully like full purpose and potential, we don't really know. I mean, you don't really add a character that isn't gonna be important into the intro sequence. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, Sage ends up showing up with a sign and flowers to apologize. He might as well have been holding a boombox for crying out loud and then they make out a bunch or more and as this is happening we actually catch up with Tom who's out with Villette and it turns out they are going to a party tonight and Tom is gonna be her date however as they're out at this like cafe or something Tom actually gets a call and it's from Savannah Savannah um, which he declines because yes, priorities, as he should. Good for you, um, or so we think. His phone then rings again, and he lies that he's gonna use the bathroom, for what reason, um, to answer it. But obviously it wasn't her, and nobody was even talking to him on the phone, it was just silence, so he hung up. But to get back to the main plot, um, Sage and Savannah may have just made up, but it isn't going to last for long. Because we've reached episode 27, Liar and the Tramp, which takes place the following morning, and Brooke shows up at Savannah's house with Mimi. She shows up because she wants to propose a deal. See, she has decided to press assault charges. In Savannah's eyes, Brooke has already won here, but you know, there's still one thing that she wants and that is Sage. So basically she says, hey, you need to break up with Sage or she's gonna press charges. And in her words, not mine, it's not really a request, it's more of a demand. Because no way in hell Savannah's family can afford to have a legal battle with Brooke, and she knows that. Oh, and to bring us back to the point I mentioned early on with Lena uh, being mistreated by her friends, we cut to Jenny, like, packing, because she's gonna go to Nathan's house when they were supposed to be having a girls' night. However, um, most of that was just spent with Jenny texting Nathan. Some of you have probably been staring at this the whole time, and I know I need to stop headcanning characters as things because I can relate to them but my god when Jenny said when you get a boyfriend you'll understand it's supposed to be girls night and you spent most of your time texting Nathan I pretty much watched our movie alone Lena you know I love you but when you get a boyfriend you'll understand I'll never understand putting some dumb guy before your best friend. Or really this entire show, I've been thinking back to that lesbian Angelina Davis fan cam I saw on Twitter last year. It is just so true. Like the closet is glass. Oh. Angelina is honestly my favorite character in this show. She is just so underrated and is kind of like the most mature person out of like everyone. When Savannah was losing her senses, she never did. Shortly after she arrives at Nathan's though, Jenny realizes she is uncomfortable with where things are going here and that he doesn't 
he doesn't actually appreciate her, he just wants her for sex. And they immediately break up, and so she calls Lena, and she gives her like the most unenthusiastic response of all time, which causes them to get in a huge fight over the phone. Hello? <laughs> Jenny? <laughs> yeah, it's me. What's going on? Nathan and I broke up. Oh. Back to Savannah, basically she was just given 24 hours to break up with Sage by Brooke, and this made her, like, physically ill. So she spent pretty much the whole day throwing up and crying, until her mom came home unexpectedly, and it turns out that she, at this, coincidentally, got laid off at work. So basically, Savannah, this is her wake-up call to, hey, you're going to have to do this, you don't have a choice. So she shows up at Sage's house, and of course, you know, it's raining to set the scene. This fucking scene. Why? Because, because I have to, Sage. What, what, is this because of Brigitte? Savannah, I'll tell her to move out. I'll prove to you that there is nothing between us. To this damn day, gets me every time. In fact, I have proof because I found my very own comment um, from four years ago in the comment section under this episode. This came out in 2015, mind you. Okay, like you all moved on. Mentally, I am still here. The slow motion zoom at the end just really ties everything together. Also, we cut back to Tom briefly and he is at this party with Violette, you know, as a, as a date. In the last episode, we got a glimpse of him before the party and he was really, he was stalking Savannah on Fishbook. Just like ever since he got that call, he's been obsessing over this. So Violette um, gets angry Angry and once again says after what happened, it really doesn't seem like she is worth his time. This gets Tom to admit that he just doesn't want to get hurt again. That's the truth here. Violette reminds him that, you know, he doesn't have to and that he has a choice, which finally just snaps him out of whatever funk he was in. So in the end, he chooses Violette and they end up kissing for the first time. And after all of that, we've reached present day. We are here at episode 29, Operation Barbecue the S***. This is the most recent episode of the series, which released on January 18th, 2019. I remember watching this as it, like, literally the day it went up. And mind you, this was in my, um, I don't like anything nostalgic or childish ever, like, I'm gonna just fit in with everyone and not express any of my interests. I meant to say era after that, it was that era for me, okay? But I still watched this one the day it was uploaded because I was so excited. It's at the beginning of this episode that we find out Tom and Violette are dating, um, she calls him, you know, her boyfriend, and then she's like, oh, is that like going too fast? And then he's like, no, like this is, this is real. This is what's happening. <laughs> but it's after she leaves for class, um, Tom ends up finding out that Savannah and Sage have just broken up, which starts making him second guess things all over again. Also, I find it funny that everyone is finding out like via Fishbook. Like that's how Brooke found out immediately dropping the charges. If we keep this knowledge in mind, it would have been so easy for her to just like fake a breakup with Sage. Plus Savannah's friends are like rich and ride or die for her. They could have like built a case like for Savannah maybe. Anyway, we cut to Savannah and Lena having a conversation over the phone and she's finally ungrounded. Watching this episode compared to the others feels like I'm catching up with an old friend. It's so modernized, but in the best way. You can tell how Sophie's editing and storytelling has really evolved with her as she's grown up. We also see the lockers had a huge upgrade, which they don't fail to point out. Overall, the feel of the series has just matured and you can really fill in this episode. Also to update the whole Lana Josh characters, they've started attending the school like right after the whole thing happened with Brooke and Savannah. And Lana already got suspended for beating up this kid who insulted Josh, I guess. They're at the school after hours because they're going over their new plan, AKA, you know, Operation Barbecue the Soft and we also find out that Rachel is talking to Nathan again. <gasps> oh, who would have saw that coming? Anyway, back to Lana. Um, Brooke ends up walking out of like the room they were in because like Rachel made a comment about what she was wearing or something, and she actually sees Lana in the hallway. But back to Savannah. Um, Brooke's crew have basically convinced the whole school that Savannah tried to kill her which is why Lena says it's going to suck when she returns. But Savannah kind of already expected this anyway, so it's not that much of a shocker to her. But this episode actually ends with Tom back in France as he's saying goodnight to, you know, Violette. And she notices his phone is ringing, but he just thinks it's honestly a telemarketer because it's so late. But it actually turns out to be Savannah. And so when Tom accidentally drops his phone and Violette sees the missed calls, 
she ends up blocking Savannah's fish book and number. And I'm pretty sure she ends up answering the call and being like, stay away from my boyfriend too. I can't remember. But that was my unhinged recap of the entirety of LPS Popular. Now, as a closing, I thought it'd be kind of fitting to discuss the future for the show. But also since three months from now, we'll officially mark the fifth anniversary since the last episode of LPS Popular was posted. As you might recall, there was a huge gap between episodes 28 and 29. This was due to Sophie actually getting in a car accident, um, you know, not planned whatsoever. So obviously she wasn't able to make the episodes as consistently as she used to because she was healing from the injuries she sustained, which is why she opted to making that little series where Tom gets kidnapped. Although still challenging, this mini series required a lot less physical work than a whole episode of LPS Popular would take. Another thing I think is important to note, although I don't think it's the cause here, is in 2020, a year after the last episode, Kappa came into play on YouTube, which if you don't know, it has wiped out so many LPS creators by their choice uh, from this platform due to the fact that it targets them unfairly because LPS Popular is the perfect example of, you know, hey, we make our content with plastic children's toys, but in no way is the series targeted towards children. But if you were to ask me uh, personally, I have no idea what the foreseeable future is when it comes to LPS Popular. In some ways, I think it's been five years and this series, if it was really meant to continue, it would have by now. But a part of me just has this gut feeling that, you know, just like that episode did in 2019, something could be coming when we just least expect it. I mean, you know, we are one episode away from like concluding the second season, especially since Sophie is very much still active on YouTube, just not in the way you would think. She actually runs a DIY beauty and skincare blog with her mom titled a life adjacent, which I'll actually be linking in the description for anyone who wants to support her and check it out. Also, I don't know if you guys know Jazzy Ann, she used to be on Seven Supergirls. She made a video a while ago about LPS Popular and Sophie actually saw it. I even noticed when I was looking for a playlist with like all the episodes on it, um, on her channel, she favorited that video. So she's definitely still lurking on that account. But whatever the future might be, I genuinely wish her the best. Like I honestly applaud her for the work that she's put into this series, point blank period. Projects like this, I feel like, are what got me into editing and what got me into making videos of my own and what got me into my niche on this channel in the first place. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed and let me know your thoughts and opinions on LPS Popular in the comments. I would love to discuss. I'm just really happy I got to remake this video. I initially talked about this series in spring of 2022 and I lost half my footage and it just didn't, you know, pan out like I hoped for. Filming YouTube videos with an iPhone with full storage is not for the week. I know this isn't much of a niche topic anymore because I get recommended like literally every commentary video essay about this show ever in existence, but it's been on my list of videos to make for just far too long for me not to contribute any thoughts into the conversation. And with that, I will see you guys in my very next video.